Okay, so data is, if we go back to this, this distinction between content and form, or logos and lexis, raw data, just numbers in a spreadsheet, is the content. There's something there, um, but it's not even just the content by itself. Just having numbers isn't enough to tell a story. If you're collecting data about Medicaid usage so that you can then figure out the causal effect of Medicaid on poverty, Having those raw numbers is not going to be the truth that you're trying to uncover. The actual truth you're trying to uncover is the causal effect of the program on, on social issues. Um, and so even then, like just the raw numbers and the raw facts are not enough. You have to do something to enhance that. You have to fit it within a specific form to be able to get the truth that you're looking for. Um, but there's some hesitancy in the world of statistics and statisticians um, about relying on beauty and relying on, on standards that go beyond just numbers. And so there's this tendency with um, kind of other, like older generations of statisticians and analysts where they just want to see the raw data. And so let's say you have a data set that has a column named X and a column named Y. You, your research question is, are these two things related? Um, are they correlated? What's kind of the average value of X? What's the average value of Y? These could be like age and poverty level or something, imagine they're just important data that you've collected and you want to know if they're related. And so you can look at that spreadsheet, you can run some simple R code to see how they're related. And so like the average value of X is 54, neat. Average value of Y is 47, neat. Um, the correlation between the two is basically zero, negative 0.06. So X and Y are not related. And so in the, in the anti-data visualization world, where they don't want art to get in the way, they don't want perception to get in the way, um, you would just run this and you'd say, hey, there's no correlation between these. Don't publish this paper because we won't find any, any relationship at the end. Um, and that, that's fine. Like That all seems reasonable. And we're relying on just raw data. Um, we're not letting any of this humanities wishy-washy stuff get into our analysis. The problem with that, though, is without looking at the data and actually plotting it, um, we don't know what the underlying trend actually looks like. We know there's no correlation, but it could look like a whole bunch of different things. So if you look at this animation here, every single one of these scatter plots has the same mean for x and y and standard deviation for x and y and the same correlation of having no correlation. But all 13 of these little data sets here, including the one that's shaped like a dinosaur, um, they all look wildly different. If you just said there's no relationship, it could be that there's no relationship because they're all moving positively. If we look here, we can see all the different ones. So if you look here, there's a whole bunch of slanted down ones. But if you draw just a best fit line there, there's not going to be any relationship. But it looks like there's stuff going down. Or if you look here, it's slanting upward with a whole bunch of different subgroups, and you're going to miss those subgroups because you're not looking at it. This X-shaped one behind me here, um, you're, you're going to miss the subgroups that are going up and the subgroups that are going down, um, and you're not going to get the full picture of the data. Or you might just have dinosaur data. And without looking at the data itself, you're not going to get enough information from just the mean and standard deviation and the numerical numbers that you get. And this is good. Humans are really good at finding patterns. We are really bad at finding patterns. Like if you just had to look at this right here, um, that's really, really hard to see any patterns in there. Um, and I, I don't know anybody who can just look at a spreadsheet and know what's going on. We have to be able to look at it. Um, and this is because evolutionarily, like we, um, this paper here that was published in 2014, it argues that humans are kind of the best animal because we are really, really good at recognizing patterns. Um, and that's the reason we've been able to evolve to the point where we're like uh, having WebEx um, distant learning class sessions while like chimpanzees are not. And it's because millions of years ago, we learned how to recognize patterns in the wild. And so if we saw a cheetah, um, we knew it was a cheetah and we could run away while other animals would get eaten. So humans have this, this deep sense of pattern recognition, and we're really good at, at doing it. And so we need to take advantage of that and look at our data to find those patterns. Um, there's sometimes some danger to that. Sometimes we love patterns too much, and we overinterpret things. Um, this is actually a thing called pareidolia, where you see patterns that aren't there. 
And um, sometimes this, this can be bad if you look at a plot and, it, and you think that there's a pattern, but really there's not. It's because you're trying to see shapes. You're trying to force the story that you want onto the data. That's bad. Don't do that. Um, it can also be fairly innocent. Um, there's a whole website um, or a Twitter account called uh, Faces in Things. And so if you see things like this, this looks like a screaming bell pepper, but it's really just a pepper that was cut in half. But we over we overinterpret the pattern there. Um, this is a picture from the Mars rover a few years ago where it was driving around and it caught this shadow um, on this rock. And Twitter went wild because people thought that that was a person. If you zoom in, that looks like this lady that's standing on a rock on Mars. It's definitely not. It's just a shadow. Um, but we're really good at recognizing the patterns. Or if you look at this angry uh, surveillance camera here that's pointing a gun at you, it's not actually, but again, we overinterpret um, the patterns that we see. So don't do that. Um, but we also do need those patterns. And so for, for a good example here, and hopefully this will kind of convert you to always visualizing data, um, very often in academic articles and in think tank articles and other kind of public facing st statistical publications, you'll see tables like this. Um, this is from a paper I wrote that looks at uh, the effect of an NGO getting kicked out of a foreign country on donations to that NGO. Do donors care um, if the organization they like to donate to was kicked out of a, of a foreign country because of a crackdown on NGOs? Um, and so we did this experiment to see if there was an effect, and we found that sometimes there was, sometimes there wasn't. All of that information, all the results are here in this table. And so often you'll see this in a report, and people will say, refer to table one for the effect. And good luck finding the effect in there. Um, but that's what academics do, is they just stick that in there and say the effect's there, good luck. Instead, this plot right here has the same information as this table. It's exactly the same. It's just these numbers are mapped onto um, the different plots here. And this is actually way more interpretable. You can see um, if there's any significant differences. So if you look at this line at zero, any of these dots that are overlapping with that line are generally not significantly different from that line because it could be, um, like if you look at this difference in the average amount donated, um, there are some situations where it could be zero. It's generally positive, but there's some where it's zero. Um, but if you look down here, if you look at this government assistance frame with government funding, or humanitarian assistance frame with government funding, looking at the effect of crackdown, we did different conditions in this experiment here. This is a significant effect. It's definitely not zero. It barely crosses that line, and so we have a positive result there. That same positive result is somewhere in this table. I think it is this line right here, maybe. Um, perhaps I would have to look at the table for a long time to see that. Um, but just having a figure here, you can understand the patterns and understand the underlying truth a lot faster than just looking at a table. And that's because we are good at recognizing patterns. And so um, one of the core principles of data visualization is that we need to take advantage of our superior pattern recognition skills and and do stuff with it. Make things that, that let people use those important skills that we have to understand underlying truths a lot better.